Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Rivera, and today we're discussing how librarianship has shifted over the last two decades from managing books to a focus on community. I'm joined today by Chandra Van Eindbergen, DPL's Youth Services Supervisor, and Catherine Jasper, DPL's Adult Services Supervisor. Their department manages all of the community librarians across Deschutes Public Library's district. Thanks for joining us today. Can you describe a little bit more about what community librarians do here at Deschutes Public Library? Yeah, and thanks for making a space for us to share this. Um, we, it's hard to describe what we do because there's so much variety, but I would say overall, there's like three kind of overlapping categories. One, um, there's a lot of programming that goes on where the librarians themselves are creating content or designing programs and then offering them to our community, either in the building or out of the building, um, all over the place. Um, there's services that we offer. So the, anything like in-depth research or help with, um, you know, you need a tour, you need some orientation, you need us to come to your classroom. So lots of services where we're providing direct service to our community members. And then outreach and networking, which is where we're out and about either raising awareness of what the library does or um, actually extending the library experience out into the community. One of the big things that we're doing is trying to reach portions of our population that have barriers to accessing the library. So whether that is bringing programs or bringing services out into the community to where people are, um, because not everyone can easily access the library with a variety of different barriers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's so much more community focused now. I know librarianship, the, the stereotypical librarian is very focused on maintaining books, maintaining quiet, and our libraries have a lot more activity now, um, and we have a lot more programming now, and I think uh, you know our, our librarians are a lot more extroverted and a lot more uh, just, they have their hands dirty in the community all the time. So um, can you describe the, the role of the modern librarian here in Deschutes County? In really broad terms, I feel like we see ourselves as connectors. Um, so we still love books. We still love learning. You know, we, that's still top of our list, you know, important. Um, but we are about connecting people to those books in whatever way they need to. And like Chandra said, sometimes that's overcoming some barriers or some um, situations where it's not always easy to get access to a book. Um, but we also want to connect people to community resources. So a lot of what we do might be just bringing community organizations together or bringing people together with each other. And that's the other thing is we want pe to connect people to their own communities and we want people to leave. Um, I always think that the best kind of connection is the connection that goes on after we're gone so that it keeps going, you know? Um, and we have some really fun examples of that. I think... It you kind of mentioned it in the past, libraries and librarians were these stewards or even gatekeepers of information. We hold the information and we allow you to have it. But now librarians see themselves far more as part of the social infrastructure of a community. Um, that's kind of our, our purpose is out in the community. Yes, it's access to information and all of our things, but as Catherine said, it's that connection and sense of belonging that we're really trying to nurture. And I think that's really important, especially when, you know, I, I feel like I hear this often where folks will say, oh, what, what do we need a, librarian or right. a, a library for? Because we have the internet. And the internet can be a very lonely place. Yes. Um, and even even when you're in groups, you know, you're not, you're not having that face-to-face -face connection. And a lot of the programming that we offer here at the library really helps people connect, like you said, connect with their communities, connect um, with other people, make, you know, it, it provides opportunities that would not otherwise be available and a space for that to happen in as well. Um, for free. For free, <laughs> I mean, exactly. that's a huge it's part of free. it, you library know. library card gets you access to the books <laughs> and all the programming, yeah. all the connections. So I think that's, that's wonderful. Uh, one thing that our community librarians do a lot is partner with outside organizations. Um, and uh, what have you heard back from you know, some of the, it's not only organizations, but individuals sometimes. Um, it's just, it's people who can come help facilitate uh, different programs. Uh, what have you heard back from some of the organizations and individuals that you've worked with? Well, we, despite how much we try and tell people what we do, we still hear a lot, oh, I didn't know a library did that 
even for things that we've been doing for decades. Um, so no matter how much we try and advertise what we're doing, being able to get out into the community, working with partner organizations, working with schools, working with different groups, really shows them the depth of what a library is for and what the librarians can do. Yeah. And then like you said, we get comments from individuals, which is always amazing. Like I got a job or um, I can connect with the online world in a meaningful way, in a way I couldn't before, you know, I had that class or I came to the, the open lab. Um, one of the things that we do quite a bit is we do take books. We have a program called the Shareberry program where we have, um, we take books that we have an excess of in our collection. They've been withdrawn from the collection because we no longer need them. And now we can repurpose them by putting them strategically throughout the community to people who maybe didn't make it into the building to check them out. And we do that in a lot of our transitional housing places, um, locations throughout the county. And we also do it through some of the food banks and food distribution sites. Um, and those are the kind of situations we've had specific activity directors or program directors reach out and say, you're bringing joy and normalcy to situations that don't always have a lot of people bringing joy and normalcy. And so, you know, that's the other thing we really hope is that when we're out in the community, we hope we're bringing the joy yeah. of books, the joy of learning and the joy of connection everywhere. And I think it shows through. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And it, it you know, the libraries are for everybody. And that's, I think that really shows if you, if you go and look in our events guide or you look on our online calendar, you're going to find programming that, that really meets people where they are. Yeah. Um, and it, it, you know, it's, it's for rich, poor, it doesn't matter who you are. The library is free for all you have to do is come in and get a card and it's free. You get access to everything. And we're getting a bunch of new buildings, new renovations happening across the district. And, uh, two new libraries, which is very, very exciting. Um, what, what do you think those buildings are going to do to enhance the work that the community librarians do in our community? The renovated libraries and the new libraries will offer us different types of spaces than we've had before. Um, we are often competing amongst ourselves and our different departments for space to be able to offer a program. Um, but the, the new libraries will also have small spaces and large spaces and our creative spaces. It will just, it will allow us to do things simultaneously in different areas for different populations and with different purposes that we just have not been able to do before at all. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can grow some of our programs. Like one great example is every year for the last um, 16 years, our 16th one is coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, we've hosted the volunteer fair um, and it's really popular. It's an opportunity for local nonprofits and organizations to come and share with the community what they do and to see if people want to volunteer or you know get more information to see if it's a good match for volunteering. And we have to run a lottery every year because we don't have enough physical space for all the nonprofits that would like to um, would like to participate. And so once we have more space, we're, maybe we won't even have to have the lottery anymore. Maybe we can just welcome everybody. We don't know for sure what'll happen, but um, it's gonna be definitely a great opportunity to grow things and make them bigger. That's very exciting. I know with uh, a lot of the renovations, you know, community librarians and our programmers had to get a little bit creative and develop a lot of community partnerships for that extra space. And even even when the buildings are in there, sometimes sometimes there's other venues that just offer a better a better fit for that program. So it's exciting that we're actually going to have that space within library walls. And not only is it is it happening, you know, it's happening here in Bend, but it's happening across the district. Every right. building gets yeah. improved spaces that will help facilitate that environment. Um, I know you both have been touching on this a lot, but what are some of the services that CLs offer? It's a really long list. Um, the youth services librarians, they offer, of course, story times in both English and Spanish, both in and out of the building. Uh, we do STEAM programs, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math for school age kiddos. Um, we do sensory friendly family program. 
We have book clubs. What else? Yeah, I mean, and then if you if we think more like out in the community, there's some big events we do. Like every April is El Dia de, Lo, de los Niños, El Dia de los Libros, and it's in Redmond at Hugh Hartman Elementary, and hundreds of people come and celebrate kids and celebrate books, and we have entertainment and food, and it's so fun. Um, we try to do a similar big community event in Lapine. It just had our first one, the Lapine Harvest and Health Fair. Um, and that, again, I mean, hundreds of people came out for food and fun and organizations. Um, and then and other big outreach things we do, like we have a pretty extensive effort for Summer with the Library. Mm -hmm. um, Summer with the Library traditionally has been kids and parents come into the library and they participate and they get prizes and it's wonderful and it's so much fun. But we're trying to make sure that kids that maybe aren't in the library are still, you know, having access to it. So we have 10-ish, you know, sometimes more, sometimes less big events throughout the summer um, at parks, in communities. And that's just an opportunity to take, basically lift up the whole experience and as much as possible, just take it with us on the road. One of the other services that we provide, uh, we call it book librarian, book a trainer, or educator requests, which is on our website. People can ask us questions. They can ask for personalized reference services or um, if they want like a, someone to come out and train their group on a library resource. With educator requests, we get teachers who will ask us for help gathering books on a topic or doing um, a, a, a presentation to their class. Um, I know, it's hard. I mean, I know. there's lawyer in the library where we can connect you for a 30 minute consultation with a lawyer. Um, we have, um, business support. If you want to start a business, we have a librarian that can help you get started on research, match you up with some volunteers that'll help you. I mean, um, early learning training for care providers. Mm -hmm. The list just goes on and on. The list just goes on and on. <laughs> yeah. The one I'm most excited for, it's tax season right now. Yes. And uh, there's, a, there's a program coming up where you can get assistance mm -hmm. doing your taxes. And that can be very daunting. And, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where uh, at least my generation complains a lot about how there was classes for, you know, things that we never use in our daily life, and then there's taxes and we're never getting, right. you never got training on that. This is a great opportunity to learn. It is. Um, well, thank you so much for uh, sitting down and having this conversation with me. I think, I really hope that this conversation helps illuminate for our customers exactly what what resources are available to them and, and what community librarians are out in the community doing and hopefully it inspires some of them to go out and use those community resources because like Catherine said they're free <clears throat> um, you can if you want to listen to this uh, podcast you can find it wherever podcasts are found Spotify Apple Music and on YouTube um, thank you so much for listening and we'll catch you on the next one